Hey guys, my name is Brandon and this is Dino Corner. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about a dromaeosaur that some of you guys may have heard about. Dakota Raptor Steini, which was discovered in 2005 in Harding County, South Dakota by Robert De Palma, but didn't get named until 2015. Its name is composed of the words Dakota, which is referencing the South Dakota state it was found in, and also the Dakota people, as well as Raptor, which is Latin for plunderer. The specific name Steini actually references Walter W. Stein, who is a very prominent paleontologist that likes to fossil hunt in South Dakota. Fun little fact, Walter Stein actually got his bachelor's in geology from Appalachian State University in Boone, North Carolina, which is about three hours from where I live in North Carolina. Something I found kind of cool. The excavated fossil was a partial skeleton that included a back vertebrae, several tail vertebrae, many bones from the wings, including hands, radius, and humeri, also had several leg bones, including a few of the toes and one of the claws, as well as some teeth. It's also to be noted that the partial skeleton did not include a skull, so we're not sure what the head looked like, so most reconstructions base it off of Deinonychus and Dromaeosaurus. Originally, a furcula, or a wishbone, was associated with the specimen as well, but through later examination over the years, it's been determined that it did not belong to Dakotoraptor. One of the things that makes Dakotoraptor special is it is one of the few Dromaeosaurs that exhibits gigantism. Gigantism being the fact it was big. Relatively speaking, most Dromaeosaurs were small, about a meter or so in height, most of them even less than that. That's about three-ish feet or less in height. The few that exhibited gigantism were like Utah Raptor, Austroraptor, or Achillobator. And when I say gigantism, I mean these things were gigantic. They were incredibly tall, incredibly heavy, and just long, robust animals. And that's one thing that makes the Raptor special. There's not many dromaeosaurs that actually exhibit this. It is also the most recent gigantic dromaeosaur in the fossil record, being found from the late Cretaceous. And it is also one of the few from North America. The most prominent from North America, of course, being Utah Raptor. When Dakota Raptor was discovered, it was actually found in the Hell Creek Formation, which is most known for having Tyrannosaurus rex, Triceratops, and Ankylosaurus in it. Before Dakota Raptor's discovery, there was only one other dromaeosaur in the Hell Creek Formation, Archaeoraptor which is a relatively small dromaeosaur. Previously, some teeth had been identified as dromaeosaurus and Sauroornitholestes, but later on these got re-identified as Archaeoraptor. Now, of course, you may ask, well, they only found a few bones. How do they know for sure this was a unique animal and not something else that we've already seen? In the substratum it was found in, there weren't other theropods that were there. Yes, there was the furcula that got misidentified, but that belonged to another animal entirely. So not only was Dakotoraptor gigantic, it also had a few other very interesting characteristics that are exclusive to it. And even despite having very few bones, we were able to get a estimation of the size based on other large dromaeosaurs like Utah Raptor, and also looking at other dromaeosaurs like Deinonychus. We estimate it to be about five and a half meters long, which I think is about 17 feet. And it got a little over two meters tall, or a little over six foot. It's a pretty big animal. One of the interesting things about Dakota Raptor is that even though it is large and very similar in size to Utah Raptor, it doesn't share many characteristics with Utah Raptor. And when you start really looking at the bones we found, it's interesting to note what dromaeosaurs these bones are very similar to. Of the wing bones, the humerus is similarly shaped to Bambi Raptor, which is a very small dromaeosaur. When I say very small, I mean it is incredibly tiny. So it's rather interesting that this extremely large dromaeosaur shares a similar humerus with this very small dromaeosaur. The radius and ulna of the wing also are quite interesting. The radius is actually similar in shape to Deinonychus or Velociraptors, but it's very robust like a Achillobator. The ulna is also similar in shape to Deinonychus and Dromaeosaurus, but the most interesting thing about the ulna is that it shows quill knobs. A quill knob is a little bump on the bone that was an attachment point for feathers. This doesn't mean that these were flight feathers, they're just a strong attachment point. You can even see these on the ulna of modern birds. Sorry for the gruesome picture. And this find in particular is unprecedented in large dromaeosaurs. And what makes this really groundbreaking is the fact that feathers have only been found in smaller dromaeosaurs, such as Velociraptor, Microraptor, and Cynoceropteryx. It's only been assumed that large dromaeosaurs also possessed feathers. There was not much evidence of it. So now there is definitive evidence of large dromaeosaurs being feathered, or at least one specific one being feathered. Going to the rest of the body, one of the very interesting ones in my opinion is the femur. The femur actually resembles that of a dromaeosaur called Mahakala. 
And what makes that really interesting is the fact that Mahakala was once again a very small Dromaeosaur, yet here's one with gigantism that has a femur that is almost identical in look to it. And one of the most well-preserved parts of the specimen was the pedal ungule or the famous killing claw. This claw measured 16 centimeters from where it attached on the body to the end of the claw, but measured 24 centimeters on the dorsal curve, making this a very big claw. Also, it is reminiscent to that of Utah Raptor, albeit a little bit more robust. So the teeth are stereotypical to that of other Dromaeosaurus and actually are similar in shape to Dromaeosaurus and Deinonychus. However, the teeth are exceptionally large for a Dromaeosaur. And thanks to the fact that the teeth were fairly large, it made them easy to identify that they weren't any other theropod in the Hell Creek Formation. Overall, Dakota Raptor exceeds the maximum body size of all known Dromaeosaurids, except for Utah Raptor, despite possessing body proportions similar to smaller Dromaeosaurs. So now that we know what we know about this Dromaeosaur, what impact does that have on our understanding of other Dromaeosaurs as well as the Hell Creek Formation ecosystem? Well, before the Hell Creek's predatory hierarchy included small Dromaeosaurs, and the large apex predator, Tyrannosaurus rex. There was no in-between. Now, Dakota Raptor fills that in-between niche, being able to hunt some of the smaller prey and some of the more medium-sized prey, but not hunting the larger prey that Tyrannosaurus rex would have hunted. Now, as far as any other behavior we can infer from this, such as pack hunting or anything like that, there's no evidence currently that it hunted in packs. In fact, pack hunting is not as well documented in Dromaeosaurs as one would believe. And in fact, pack hunting is quite uncommon in even modern relatives and descendants of dinosaurs. The only descendant of the dinosaurs that actually exhibits a pack hunting type behavior is the Harris Hawk. And even then, these packs are just ones that tolerate each other. And in fact, if Dromaeosaurs hunted in packs, it was probably only when they needed to. Similar to a Komodo dragon that is mostly a solitary hunter, but if it needs help, it will call out to let other Komodo dragons know it needs help and they will come and help. Now, once the animal is killed, all bets are off. They will fight each other for that food at that point because they don't care. At the end of the day, they are still separate animals. They're not in a group. So it is unlikely that Dakota Raptor hunted in packs and more than likely was a solitary hunter, especially considering its size. So as far as we know, it is just a large Dromaeosaur that filled the niche between small Dromaeosaurs and apex predators like Tyrannosaurus rex. Now, if you're someone who has followed the paleontology community for a while, you'll know that Dakota Raptor has come under some scrutiny in recent times. That being that when a New Mexican Velociraptorine, Dinio Bellator, was found, it was suggested that perhaps it may have been an amalgamation of parts from other Dromaeosaurs, thus meaning it could have accidentally been a chimera. We've seen chimera fossils happen before where animals are accidentally rebuilt with the wrong parts, namely the original brontosaurus that had a chimarasaurus skull. But this is a topic that is still very heavily debated and we're not really sure where that's going yet. So currently Dakota Raptor is a valid genus, but it is sitting in the hot seat. So that concludes our look at Dakota Raptor. Let's recap some of the main points. It was the last of the large Dromaeosaurs in the fossil record and it also shows that the Dromaeosaurs were expanding well into the late Cretaceous. Dakota Raptor is also one of the few Dromaeosaurs to exhibit gigantism at 5.5 meters long, and only a partial skeleton was found with no skull. Now, despite being similar in size to Utah Raptor, it actually shares many characteristics with other small Dromaeosaurs like Deinonychus, Dromaeosaurus, and Bambi Raptor. And its discovery changed our entire understanding of the Hell Creek Formation's ecosystem and the predatory hierarchy. And despite having come under scrutiny in recent years, Dakota Raptor is still, at this moment, a valid genus. It should also be noted there was a second skeleton found, and it was more gracile rather than robust, which means there could have been some sexual dimorphism within the species, but we would have to find other specimens to really confirm this. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe and hit that bell notification icon to know whenever I upload a new video. If there is a specific animal you'd like me to talk about or a specific subject you'd like me to talk about, leave it in the comments below. I may get to it at some point. And if I cover it, you may even get a shout out. And as always, my name is Brandon, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.